Hello and welcome. I'm Dom, the founder of Traverse. In this video, I'll talk to you about what happens in your brain when you're learning. When you understand the learning process, you can understand what's going well for you, where you can improve, and that enables you to become better and better at learning. And well, this video is quite long. If you understand the principles I explain properly and apply them, they will save you hours and days and weeks of frustration down the road. So I'm going to start off with a surprising piece of advice, which is while watching this video, don't take any notes. And I'll explain in just a minute why that is. So now that your attention is all focused on the video and you're not worrying about taking any notes, let's start with the first step. And the first step is actually doing a bit of a pre-study. The best way to do that is by doing something called a brain dump, which means writing down everything that you already know about the topic, everything that you need to learn, all of the keywords, the important concepts, and anything relevant that you can find. And you just need to write them down. Don't think too much, just get them out there. So I advise you to do that right now and make a brain dump about everything you already know about how the learning process works, what's going on in your brain before continuing to watch this video. Okay, I'm assuming you have made your brain dump now. If not, and you're in a hurry, it's not a disaster. I have made my brain dump here and we will go through this together. So these are all my keywords. As you can see, brain dump is actually here. So we've covered that one. And now we can move on to the stage of ingesting the new information, which is what you're doing right now by watching this video. Ingesting new information can be watching a lecture, watching a video, reading a textbook. Whatever it is, the main advice here is to not take any notes right away. And why is that? That's because when you take notes, you're basically telling your brain, well, don't worry about this. I got this covered. No need to think about this anymore. By doing that, your brain won't invest any energy in actually thinking about those things and processing them. That means that very little learning actually happens. What we want instead is to keep a high so-called cognitive load. Cognitive load is basically the amount of brain power you're using right now. And by not taking notes right away, you may feel a bit discomfortable, even overwhelmed as you take in new information because that's increasing the cognitive load. But actually this discomfort is a sure sign that actual learning is taking place in your brain. So delaying your note taking is all about becoming comfortable with this discomfort. By not offloading this information into your notes, you actually make sure that everything gets into your short term or working memory. Now, the disadvantage of that is that the capacity of your short term memory is very limited. That's why you feel this discomfort and this overwhelm. What you want is for these things to go into your long term memory. So how do we do that? That's actually a process called encoding. As the word already suggests, encoding means taking this raw information and making sense of it so that we can store it in long-term memory in a way that logically makes sense to us. Now, a lot of students don't put enough effort into encoding and they are basically focusing on those lower level orders of thinking, which means they are just storing isolated facts into long-term memory or understanding simple concepts in isolation. And that is simply not enough to make it click in your long-term memory, which means that this information is forgotten very, very soon. Instead, you have to focus on higher order thinking. So that means making connections between how what we learn relates. For example, here I can connect things in the way that the information flows. My connections actually have a direction. After I've made connections, I think about which connections are the most important. So for example, encoding is a very important concept here. So let's, let's make that one a bit bigger. Oh, whereas the brain dump, it's kind of, yeah, it's good to do, but it's, it's not as essential. So let's make that one a bit smaller. And finally, creating something new out of that information, which is basically what we are doing now. We are creating this reflection of what's happening in our brain 
in this mind map we are drawing out here. So those are really effective encoding methods which make, make sure that this information is now properly stored into long-term memory, which is called consolidation. And consolidation takes time and energy, so make sure that after doing this encoding process, you take a break to give your brain the space that it needs to process that information and store it into long-term memory. Once this information is into long-term memory, we all know what happens is that you start forgetting. And we forget things according to the forgetting curve. This is where you can see that effective encoding really matters because if we only remember basic facts, the forgetting curve will be very, very steep, which means that we forget very, very quickly and we basically need to repeat this information over and over again to actually make it stick. Whereas if we already made sure that the information logically makes sense to us, the forgetting curve will be much flatter to begin with, which means that we only need to repeat it a couple of times in order to make it stick for the long term. So these repetitions I'm talking about basically mean the retrieving information out of long-term memory and bring it back into your working memory. And there are a few effective retrieval practice techniques that we can use. One is flashcards. Flashcards use two principles. One is space repetition, which means at the optimal moment, just when we are about to forget it. And the second is active recall. Active recall means that rather than passively rereading something, we are now actively prompting our brain with a question to recall that information that we learned earlier. So again, active recall ensures that we keep high cognitive load during the retrieval process. And when doing retrieval practice, again, it is important that we focus on higher order learning. For example, if I created a flashcard like this, which is testing me on a basic fact, that is lower order thinking. So that is not very effective. Instead, a flashcard like this which is a creative question that asks me to think about a scenario and coming up with the answer requires me to think about how things relate, which things are more important, which things are details. These kinds of active recall prompts are much more effective. And another technique that you can use to do retrieval practice is the Feynman technique, which is learning by teaching. And it is what I'm doing right now. So by explaining all of this to you, it forces me to really think about how things relate, what is the best way to explain it to someone, and that really improves my own understanding as well. So if we do retrieval practice in an effective way, the information will be reconsolidated into long-term memory. And again, reconsolidation is a process that takes time and energy. So take a break after doing retrieval practice again, because that makes sure that now it is stored into your long-term memory again, and this time really for the long term. So if we do our learning according to this process that is happening into our brain, we make sure that we use high cognitive load at every stage. When ingesting the information, we are not taking notes right away. When encoding that information, we are using higher order thinking. And the same when we retrieve that information, so cognitive load is high at all stages, which again feels uncomfortable, but that's the sign that your brain is actually learning. So this is what a learning process looks like at a high level. Right now you may feel confused or overwhelmed, and that is all perfectly normal. Usually when you learn something new, it looks something like this. In the beginning you're, you're confused, then at some point you, you kind of know what this, what this picture looks like and it makes sense to you. You think you know it all, but then you bring it into practice and you discover there are actually more obstacles and it's not as easy as you initially thought. And that is when we have this dip in learning. And the good news is that once we make it through this dip, things get better. It starts to make sense. And this is where we really start seeing the benefits from using an effective learning method. And I want to help you get to this point as quickly as possible. So please 
to let me know how you're feeling right now and use this video as an example of how to bring these steps into practice by applying it to whatever it is you're learning right now. And if you run into any issues or you're looking for feedback, you can just shoot me a message. And you can also join our community where you will find lots of people all pursuing that same goal and we can go on to this journey together.